you seem to wake up in the morning and you've got this idea for a car that, you, that nobody's ever done before, it's going to be slightly different and I don't know why, I, 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 it just happens, it's like it's un unexplainable because you've got this passion to do this thing and you can't sleep, you can't do anything until you've done it, it's just incredibly silly. This is the Noble M10 and in a world that's full of shades of grey, this is Technicolor and I'm off to have some fun. And it's called the M10 because it's the 10th design by Noble Motorsport. It's selling for just under 19 grand in this 1.8 litre form, or from the summer with a 2.5 litre V6 under the bonnet. The M10 is definitely not a shrinking violet. This is a car that screams out to be looked at. Heads turn when you drive past. Cars clear in front of you. And whether you love or you loathe the styling, you have to agree, it certainly makes one hell of an impact. It's quite a, an amazing vehicle that you've, um, you've designed and built. What's your history? How, how did you get into this? You just wake up one morning and think, oh, there's nothing out there I fancy, I'm gonna go and build a car. More or less. I was racing at the time, Lotuses, and came to the end of the line racing Lotuses, thought, got to do something, I could do something better. So we started designing our own cars, which went on to win lots of races, and this is where we've ended up, really. It's just a natural progression, you know? So is there much of the racing experience that you've got in this vehicle? Yeah, quite a lot. I mean, this is why it makes the chassis so good. This is what makes it handle so well. It, it's just experience from racetrack, yeah. And it's that racing heritage that really shines through once you get behind the wheel of the M10. It's a bit like being in a mini Le Mans car. It doesn't quite have the raw power that you'd need to get through 24 hours on the circuit, but it can still pack a real punch. And just like a Le Mans car, it needs to be handled with a great deal of respect. The steering, however, is light and very, very responsive, and you really feel involved in the whole driving experience. <laughs> going to buy it? Is, it? is this a kind of boy racer? Uh, you know, those old those guys that used to soup up their escorts and tinker with the engines, now they're grown up and they've got a bit of money. Are they the kind of people that this will appeal to, do you think? It's quite possible. Most of them are solicitors and bank managers now and, and they get bored and want something for the weekends for fun. Yeah, get back to driving experience. It seems to be the major sort of people that want the car, yeah. What do you think the difference is between the specialist car market that, that you're involved in and you know the, the, the big manufacturers? What are the, sort of the main points there? We build cars we want to build. They build cars to suit a mass market. You know, we just build what we want to build, and if people like it, great. If they don't, we change the car. We make a different one. It's that simple, really. Once you get inside the cabin on a vehicle like this, it's the interior that normally lets it down. But the M10 really stands out as being something quite special. It's extremely well trimmed and to a very high standard. Yet it hasn't lost any of the rawness that is the whole appeal of this vehicle. There's plenty of space inside and the seats are very comfortable. But one thing that they are going to have to change on the production vehicles is how far forward the seat can go. Because I'm five foot four and I can hardly touch the pedals. What do you reckon the N10 is? Would you say it's it's a kit car, or is it in your, in your view a fledgling production vehicle? You know, where do you position it? I think really it's going to be more towards a production car. Although you will have the option to buy it and build it at home. Most of the people that have inquired about the car so far want a finished car. There's not really a lot of interest in kits. This is the prototype vehicle. We've got to make that clear. So what will be different in the production vehicles? Minor things really. The clutch wants a little work on it, as we said. Um, some of the instrumentation, some of the interior could be improved. And I think by the time the next car comes along, it will be a lot nicer car to drive. I think we'll just change little details that make it a little bit a little bit more to suit the lady, you know. Hi, Mr. Noble. I can't understand why you want to conform. But please don't make the production vehicles too refined. The 
essence of this car is its rawness. It's just perfect for those wannabe racers who love the sounds and the smells of motorsport. If you had a misspent week and spent hours tinkering with your Escort, souping up the engine, and now you've grown up just a little, this is the car for you. I'm convinced that there are enough driving enthusiasts out there to make it possible for Noble to sell the 50 to 100 cars they're aiming to. The only problem I can see the M10 facing is that maybe people haven't heard of the Noble brand before. Well, you have now.